Hello, my schoolers. This is my school channel. We'll be tackling the jam CBT pass question for biology. We are treating the year 2019. In this clip, we'll be solving question number 61 to number 80. So join me as we tackle question number 61. The association between two organisms living together in which only one benefits from the association while the other is neither benefited nor harmed is referred to as commensalism. Predation is like a lion hunting down an antelope, competition, fight for food, survival, meeting partners, and want to have a disperser from the word disperse, that is to spread in order to get um, the, a new plant or a new kind of species due to various agents of disperser. So, looking at what the question presents, that where one benefits, why the other is neither harmed or benefited, the correct option is C. An example of commensalism is um, the ramora fish and the shark, katu egret and katu. The list is endless. So option C is very correct. Question number 62. Which of the following we have the least effect on the rate of change of the numbers in a population? We have the least effects. If we consider mutation, that is genetic mutation, change in the genetic makeup of a particular organism. We have food supply. When food supply is excess, you will realize that there will be more of reproduction, and this will cause an increase in the number of the population. C, diseases. When there is presence of a particular disease or diseases, it can cause a rapid rate of mortality or death, which in turn means there's a drop in the number of the population. Predation is about hunting, whereby a, a stronger animal hunts down the weaker one. It can be of their own kind or of another kind, just like we have um, a tiger hunting down a prey. You can pick a prey, something like maybe a rabbit or a squirrel and what have you. So, Considering our options, we see that mutation has the least effect on the rate of change of the numbers in a population. Option A is very correct. So we have question number 63. Which of the following controls all voluntary actions? A, the olfactory lobes, this is responsible for smell. The cerebrum, which is also called the forebrain, the largest part of the brain, it controls actions like reading, actions like walking, actions like clapping, actions like jogging, and what have you. And those are voluntary actions, actions that you take consciously. We have the hypothalamus, which is responsible for regulating the body temperature, also controls our emotional responses to things. We have the pons varoli, this is responsible for breathing and sleeping majorly. So with the explanation we've shared with ourselves, we can see that the cerebrum is that part of the brain that controls all voluntary action. This makes option B very correct. Don't forget that it is not too late for you to start preparation for your coming exams. Using any of the My School tools, you can either purchase the My School mobile app or you can get the My School software. You can use the link I have provided in the description below that takes you directly to the My School website where further instructions will be given to you. So join me as we tackle question number 64. Which of the following statements describe an autonomic nervous system? This is just like automatic response. So, if you go through all of our options, you will realize that option D actually describes the statements concerning the autonomic nervous system, and which is, it affects glands, cardiac muscles, and smooth muscles. This, this talks about involuntary actions like breathing, like sleeping, and what have you. So, Option D is very correct. So do not forget that you have to hit the like button, you have to click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as we release the next video. So we are at question number 65. The glomerular filtrate contains the following except what? So the constituent of the glomerular filtrate or the glomerular filtrate contains what? It contains water. It contains glucose, it contains amino acid, it contains salt, it contains urea, just to save time. So, going through our options, we've mentioned that it contains water, 
it contains urea, it contains glucose, it doesn't contain any blood capsules. So option C is correct. So the glomerular filtrate contains the following except the blood capsules, option C. So we have question number 66. One of the following is not the theory of natural selection stated by Charles Darwin. So before we bump into our several options, you should recall that Jean Lamarck proposed the theory of use and disuse, which you can see a practical example in the long necks of giraffes. So if you go through the options, you will realize that option A states that characteristics acquired through use or disuse are transmitted to the offspring. So option A is correct. Option A is not proposed by Charles Darwin. It was brought by Jean Lamarck. Option A for emphasis sake. Question number 67. Ecology is best defined as a study of the relationship that an organism share with its environment or the interaction between an organism and its environment. So if we go through our options together, you realize that option B correctly defines what ecology is. That ecology is best defined as a study of the interrelationship between living organisms and their environment. So option B is very correct. Perhaps we need explanation on any of the questions we have tackled so far. Please use the link in the description below that takes you to the My School website where several solution providers are waiting to help you out. So join me as we tackle question number 68. The following processes are involved doing expiration in man, except... So once we breathe as humans, I will just share some things that happen within our body parts, okay? The lung deflates, the rib muscles, and even the diaphragm, they relax. The thoracic cavity also decreases in volume. Any of the options here that is contrary to what I've just shared now, shows itself as the exemption to what happens to us doing our exhalation. So looking at our options, A, B, C, and D, we'll realize that option B is contrary to what we've just shared. The thoracic cavity first increase in volume. No, the thoracic cavity decreases in volume. So this makes option B correct to the question we have been asked. In case you have better explanations to any of the questions we've tackled so far, please, I would like to know, kindly use the comment section below by indicating the question number and sharing the suggestion or explanation you would like to give. So question 69, which of the following is an example of continuous variation? Just notice that continuous variation is a characteristic that changes gradually over a range of values or over time within a particular special or a particular population. So if we look at all of this, this is a discontinuous variation, okay? This is sex, dif sex differences in human is a discontinuous variation. You hemoglobin type, this is definitely a discontinuous variation. But when you talk about height or weight in humans, they are continuous variations. So one of the following that is an example of continuous variation is height in humans, which makes option D very correct. This is question number 70. One of the following is an effect of clay soil on vegetation. Because a clay soil supports luxuriant vegetation such as forests. So the correct option is A. So this is question 71. Which of the following factors is not considered in a terrestrial habitat? Temperature is very important in a terrestrial habitat. Sunlight, which um, some living things like plants use as source of energy to generate their food. Why some use it to regulate their body temperature? Those are the cold-blooded animals like reptiles. We have humidity. This talks about level of um, or the moisture content of of a particular surrounding, okay? Then turbidity talks about the clarity, the degree of clarity or the measure of clarity of a liquid, particularly a water body. So with all of this explanation we just shared, we realize that turbidity isn't one of the factors considered in a terrestrial habitat. This makes option D correct. Question 72. What types of vertebrates assist in breathing alongside with the ribs? Okay, so let's just do a quick 
um, quick observation about all of these vertebrates. We have the first one, which is the cervical around your neck. We have the thoracic, which is this upper torso. Then we have the lumbar, which is the lower torso. Then we have the pelvic gidu, which is around your belt, where you hang your belt region. Then we have the sacral, which is about the tail region. So looking at all of this, the type of vertebrates that go or assist in breathing, that goes or assists in breathing alongside the ribs, they are the thoracic cavity, this part of it. So this makes option C correct. Question number 73. Which of the following statements is correct about Southern Guinea savanna in Nigeria? At first, you should know that it is the largest of all the vegetation in Nigeria. Also, it has some few scattered trees, so this nullifies this answer. Also, the trees you can find there, they are trees like oil palm, dumb palm, shea butter, and the list goes on like that. So, saying it has no tree, that is struck out. Saying it has no plant species, of course, there are tall grasses there. This is struck out. Saying that the trees you can find there, they are Iroko, the likes of Iroko and um, Opepe is struck out because we mentioned oil palm, dumb palm, and the like. So, going through our options together, we realize that the statement which is correct about Southern Guinea savanna in Nigeria is that it is the largest of all the bound community in Nigeria. Option A is correct. For you to attain the kind of success that you desire for yourself, I would recommend that you purchase the My School mobile app or you get the My School software using the link I have provided in the description below that takes you directly to the My School website where you'll be given further instruction to get any of these tools. So join me as we tackle question number 74. In an ecosystem, the organism which changes light energy into stored chemical energy is the what those are the producers, majorly the green plants, okay, that contains chlorophyll. So they convert light energy or they use light energy to produce chemical energy, which is source of food to other organisms in the ecosystem. So that makes option B very correct. So do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as the next videos are released. So here we are at question number 75. In the theory of use and disuse, Lamarck proposed that evolution occurred because of the following, except, so let's consider option A, except that there is natural selection of offspring. So, the theory of natural selection was proposed by Charles Darwin, not Jean Lamarck. So this is the exception that we are looking for. So option A is very correct. Question number 76. The basis of growth involves the following processes except cell reduction. Of course, there is nothing like cell reduction when it concerns growth. The cell divides, okay? It enlarges and there is differentiation of cell to their specific functions or roles that they play in growth. So, the basis of growth involves the following process except cell reduction. That makes option A correct. Question 77. Which of the following organs can be considered vestigial in humans but functional in other mammals? Okay, so that is your appendix and even the tail bone, okay? Appendix does not have a primary function that the scientist or science can confirm so far. So the appendix is the vestigial organ that can be found in humans, but in other animals or other mammals, they are useful, but in man, they are near useless. So that makes option B the correct answer. Perhaps you have one or two questions you would like to ask. You can use the link in the description below that takes you to the My School website where several solution providers are waiting to help you out with a moment. So let's tackle question number 78. The study which involves the interrelationship between groups of organisms or species of organisms living together in an area is referred to as psychology. Psychology means we are studying a particular organism or a particular species of organisms, okay? Ecological niche means you are studying the relationship between 
uh, an organism, okay, and its environment, but majorly, what is the role of that organism in that particular ecosystem? Very good. So we have ecosphere. Ecosphere, in the terms of biosphere, it talks about um, things about life and life supporting system. But in, in its own ownness, like in the in the full view of what ecosphere refers to, it refers to studying the earth as a living entity on its own. So all of this explanation just points out that psychology is a study which involves the interrelationship between groups of organisms or species of organisms living together in an area. Option C is very correct. So, in case you have one or two explanations, ideas or suggestions you would like to share with us, please use the comment section below by indicating the question number and the solutions you would like to share. Over to question 79. Thunderstorm can be beneficial to plants because it does what? Okay, this is how it works. We are aware that 70% of our atmosphere contains nit nitrogen. And this nitrogen is unstable and unusable to the plant. Okay, so when this thunderstorm occurs, it helps to dissolve this unstable, unusable nitrogen in the atmosphere. It helps to dissolve it in water. And this forms the underground water that the plant can tap from. They can tap in this nitrogen as a natural fertilizer. So the thunderstorm can be beneficial to plants because it adds nitrates, converting the atmospheric nitrogen to nitrates to the soil, which the plant takes in. So option D is very correct. Question number 80. A flowering plant having both the male and female flowers on the same plant is said to be what? Is it a regular plant? At first, what's a regular plant? A regular plant or a regular flower is one that each floral part on a particular hull, okay, the floral part, they have the same size and the same shape or similar size and shape. So looking at this, the regular plant or regular flower will be complete opposite of the regular. So what is a monoecious plant okay is one that actually has both the male and the female flowers on a single plant even the word monoecious means single house that is a single house accommodates both the male and the female while di dioecious means double house or double housing that is a single plant may contain only male or only female and you will find the other part either only male or only female flowers on another plant so we can conclude safely that option C, monoecious flowers, they have both male and female flowers on them. So that is the end for this segment, but there's still definitely more videos to be produced. I believe you are enjoying this sort of content and you would like us to bring you more of them. Kindly hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get informed as the next videos are released just for you.